Hold on one second, got to turn around. There we go. Hey gang, this is Andy over. Oops, let me uh, go ahead and plug in my mic too. I meant to do that before I got started, but it's so funny with how the apps, there we go. The apps change from time to time and uh, throw me off as far as what I'm going to start uh, talking about uh, and after I put the launch or click the button to start the, the video. But anyway, you don't need to know all about that. Uh, what I want to uh, talk about, and let me actually bring this down a little bit more. Hey, Chris. That was good. Okay. So in this, uh, so in this room, uh, we're using this for bed bug detection dog uh, scenarios. Uh, the dogs come in, the handlers come in, and I tell them, um, this is your room. You're going to uh, be searching this area. Let me know when your dog alerts and makes the find. And uh, let me know when you're done and blah, blah, blah. So I, I give them some rules about this particular search. I don't tell them if there's a find in here or how many finds, if there are any in this room. And so that can vary. Uh, what makes this uh, situation uh, uh, you know, uh, unusual for some is that I didn't put the bed bug bile that I'm using, uh, I didn't put it on a bed or a couch. I put it here inside the magazine. So here's the bile for the bed bugs. You can see it maybe here. Uh, so the bed bug bile is in a magazine on top of the table on top of this table. And why that's significant for some handlers is because what they do in their training quite often is often, if not always, hide the bed bugs on either a couch, a chair, or a bed, and sometimes nightstands, right? And so what happens when you come into a, especially a sterile environment like this is the draw for the dog to go to the couch is overcomes their desire to follow odor maybe to the table. Or the dog will smell the odor in the magazine and then the dog will then automatically go to a couch. Why? Because the fingerprint or the pattern uh, that the dog is, has is um, the pattern that the dog has is that they always make the find on a couch, right? So if the dog smells the odor, it doesn't, it doesn't connect as part of the pattern that they have in their head to alert at the magazine because they quite often go to the couch and do that. If the odor was on the couch, the dog would smell it and then sit. You know, it'd be more automatic because that's what the dog is used to. So what we've seen is the dogs will come to the odor, smell it, and then go to the couch and sometimes alert because that's where the, they get rewarded most often, right? Is at the couch, not anything like this. Or they'll smell it, think about it, and then leave it and say, no, that doesn't fit what I'm used to. I'm, I'm almost always finding them on couches or beds or end tables. I never find them in this situation, so the dog just simply leaves it because it doesn't connect. Or I have them at some point say, you know, your dog has not searched this table. They try to send the dog to the table, and the dog won't go to the table because the couch is too close, right? So they keep saying, search, and the dog goes past the table and goes to the couch and starts sniffing the couch. Because they hardly ever, if, if ever, have ever found anything on this situation. So why is that important for pet dog owners? All right, so there are some good things with patterns that you can get into, right? And you get into a pattern and, it, and it's good. A pattern uh, that would be good was if you go to a front door at your house and you go to open it up, the dog should sit and wait until the door comes open, right? So that's a good pattern. Uh, a bad pattern is that you only demand obedience at certain locations, like the training field where you got trained. If you're only doing obedience at the training field, then what you're gonna get is good training and good obedience at the training field and you may not get it at Home Depot or you may not get it on your walk around the block. So if you're really strong in your obedience and you're in follow through in one location as opposed to another, that is why you don't have good obedience at these other locations. Because, uh, you know, like at the training field, you, you could be doing it just because they're, we are there, you know, our trainers are there staying on top of you and, and, and making sure you're doing it right. But then when you go home, you're not as disciplined. And so that's why at the training field, your dog can become obedient and on your walk, the dog cannot. So you want to be careful about, um, you know, again, setting up patterns uh, with your dog that are not going to uh, serve you well uh, when you get into a new environment. And so be careful about that. Um, there are other mannerisms that you can fall into. There are other things that you can expect from your dog in some places as opposed to others. Uh, maybe you expect a lot more from your dog. Uh, you know, when you're in the house with a dog, but you don't expect, expect that same, um, you know, discipline and, and behavior when you're out in public because you're afraid somebody might 
um, say something to you because you're correcting your dog or you're telling your dog no and you don't do that in public because you're self-conscious about that. That will teach the dog that you're not as serious about obedience outside as you are in the home. Where does that also happen? It happens with kids, right? With your kids, you'll discipline your kids in the home, but you, do, you don't discipline in the same manner out in public, and so your, your kids can also misbehave more often in public. So that's a pattern of doing things differently at home as you do in public, and so you, that can uh, cause you some grief. So this is uh, one of the things I was thinking about, about this particular find, that you run into, uh, can run into that thing. There's some comments here. Let's see. Uh, Jack, I've learned a lot about uh, dog training issues from... You even after 15 years. Oh, cool. <laughs> Chris is here. Yep. Uh, and Jack saying hello. Awesome. That was Aldo you saw coming in and walking out. Uh, and, uh, and it was good to see Aldo shaking his head in agreement with what I was talking about. All right, you guys. So that's just something I was thinking about. We're here at the NISDECA uh, conference. We call it the NISDECA conference. Uh, but it's three days of training with bed bug detection dogs. We had two trainers uh, uh, from our uh, human dog uh, transformation system who came and spent the whole day with us yesterday. So that was a good benefit they get by being one of our students uh, in that program. And they had a really good time. We used them as actors in our scenarios. Uh, they got to listen in on all the lectures that we gave. They got to listen in to all the debriefs after scenarios. So the uh, Diego and Kaya, uh, uh, Kai, um, who are the trainers that came, I, they told me they got a lot out of it. So that was really good for them. I just saw another comment pop up. Uh, Antonia, hey Antonia, uh, nice to see you. Uh, and, um, and so that's it. So that's uh, all I have for you. Just be careful about those patterns. Again, there are some good ones. Like I said, the front door, you expect the same thing at the front door all the time, and that is a good pattern. Feeding, right? When you pull out the dog food bowl or the pan, uh, the dog should immediately go into a sit position and look at you in the eye even when you're putting the food down and wait for permission. That's a good pattern. Uh, the bad patterns is when the dog only does certain things in certain locations at certain times with certain equipment. That could be a bad pattern. You want the dog to do it no matter what, all the time, every time, no matter the situation, no matter the location, no matter what leash you have on, whether you had the leash on or off. You wanted the dog to do it all the time, always. All right, that's it for me. I'll talk to you later. Take care, bye.